Christ yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, Alpha and Omega. All time belongs to him and all ages. To him be glory and power through every age and forever. Amen.
Let us now confess our disobedience to him. Father, Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against, against our neighbour in what we have thought, in what we have said and done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please stand. As we say the Gloria together. Glory, Glory to, to God, God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. As we stand, let us pray. Lord God, your Son left the riches of heaven and became poor for our sake. When we prosper, save us from pride. When we are needy, save us from despair that we may trust in you alone, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for our readings. <coughs> the first reading is taken from Isaiah, chapter 55, verses 1 to 5. How, oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk, without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labour for that which is not does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear, and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader, a commander to the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that you do not know, you shall run to you. Because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. And the second reading is from Romans chapter 9, verses 1 to 5. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred, according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belonging the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, comes the Messiah, who is over all. God bless it forever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the gospel. 
Alleluia, alleluia. I have called you friends, says the Lord, for all that I have heard from my Father I have made known to you. Alleluia. Alleluia. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away, so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, they need not go away, you give them something to eat. They replied, we've nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds and all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the living God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Well, we've just heard that very familiar story of the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000. The only miracle, apart from the resurrection of Jesus, that can be found in all four of the Gospels. Let's read it again with new eyes today. Eyes that have seen all sorts of pain, deprivation and suffering these last four months. What can it teach us about Jesus and his relationship with his first followers and his relationship with us? Well, firstly, Jesus knew bereavement for himself. We enter the story today at the tail end of Matthew's account of the beheading of our patron, John the Baptist, Jesus' cousin. The passage we heard today began when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. What Jesus had just heard was that his cousin John had been killed. Jesus' reaction is to withdraw a natural grief reaction. Not only would he have been grieving the loss of a family member, but also perhaps questioning what this news might mean for his own ministry and what might happen to him. When we pray to Jesus, we do not pray to a God who is distant from us. As the writer of the letter to the Hebrews says, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who in every respect has been tested as we are. If you have known bereavement, Jesus has as well. We found at our safe space group here in Clown the value of spending time with people who have been there, those who've also struggled. We all come together to share, and when we realise that others know what it feels like, we realise we are not alone. When we come to Jesus in prayer, we come to our loving Saviour, who knows what it is to lose someone that you love. Secondly, when Jesus looks on the crowd that have hunted him down because they want him to heal them, he has compassion on them. Now this is a rather weak translation of the Greek word used here by Matthew. The word translated as compassion, now I'm not going to pronounce this correctly, is esplanknithse, and it means to have a response in the gut. Perhaps a better translation was that as Jesus saw the crowd in need, he had a gut reaction to do something. We feel things in our gut acutely, don't we? We get butterflies before a test or before speaking in public. We feel sick when we hear bad news. We feel it here in our gut. And that was Jesus' reaction on looking at the crowd in their need. He was so moved, he felt it in his gut. Now I have a feeling that Jesus looks on us in the same way. That Jesus looks on our world as we grapple with this terrible virus. And Jesus feels compassion for us in his gut. Thirdly, 
Jesus works in partnership with the disciples, his friends. The disciples and Jesus both look at the situation in front of them with different eyes. The disciples see a crowd of thousands, 5,000 men, but also their wives, sisters and children. So more realistically, about 10,000 people. A stadium full, if you like. Tired and hungry at the end of a long day out in the middle of nowhere. The disciples see an impossible scenario and their solution is to ask Jesus to send anyone home. Quite sensible. Jesus sees an opportunity. Jesus says, they need not go away, you give them something to eat. And the disciples respond that all they have to feed all these people is five loaves and two fish. In one of the other Gospels, the disciples say it would take a year's wages to buy food for a crowd that big. Jesus asks the disciples to bring what they have to him. And then we have this very mysterious act. Jesus breaks the bread, blesses it, and somehow everyone is fed. Not just a bite, but full to bursting with loaves left over. We don't know how this miracle happened, but it did and everyone was fed. Jesus took what the disciples had and transformed it and gave it back to them to share it out. And Jesus invites us to do the same. This story encourages us to look at what we have and not at what we don't have. We look out into the world and see great need and Jesus says to us, you give them something. And we say, we can't, we don't have the money or resources. And Jesus says, well, what do you have? And we realise that we do have something. It might be small, but we can offer it to God. And God will do far more with it than we could ask or imagine. So as we look into the future, Jesus looks on us with that gut feeling of compassion and he is ready to bless whatever it is we can offer him, so that the world might truly be fed, physically and spiritually. We offer our small acts of service, our money, food for the food bank, and Jesus takes it and blesses it. We come with our humble offering today, and we pray that we can look on the world with Jesus' eyes of compassion, and with Jesus' vision that all is not lost, there is always something we can do and in partnership with Jesus the world can be changed. This miracle is considered also to be a vision of heaven, a heavenly banquet to which we are invited where one day we will sit down and be fed and no one will be left out, no one will go hungry and all will be satisfied. We look ahead to that day and as we share in Holy Communion today we hold that vision in mind, knowing that the small taste of the wafer is but a tiny glimpse of the heavenly banquet, a reminder that Jesus looks on us with care and compassion, and that if we come to Jesus, our hunger and thirst will be satisfied. Amen. Amen. Stand as you are able as we say the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God the Father, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, 
and the life everlasting. Amen. Please sit or kneel as we come to pray. We pray to Jesus, who is present with us to eternity. Jesus, light of the world, bring the light and peace of your gospel to the nations. We pray for all governments responding to the pandemic, and we pray especially for those working on a vaccine against COVID-19. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, bread of life, give food to the hungry, Bless the work of our local food bank and nourish us all with your word. Be with those who are still attending church at a distance at home. May we all know fellowship together, even though we are physically apart. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, our way, our truth, our life. Be with us and all who follow you in the way. Help us to continue to grow in our faith and make time to spend with you. Deepen our appreciation of your truth and fill us with your life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, good shepherd, who gave your life for the sheep, recover the struggler, bind up the injured, strengthen the sick, and lead the healthy and strong to new pastures. We pray especially for Wyatt and Garrett Ruthven, Barbara Needham, Veronica Blackwell, Margaret Gilmore, Luke Firth, Sandra Miller, Chloe Parks, Betty Wood, George Naylor, Maureen Pearson, Elizabeth Hamilton, Robert Verity, Lily Wood, and the Reverend David Hull. Let them know that just as you shared in the pain and suffering of life, so will they share in your healing and at this life's end, your resurrection into the glory of God. Merciful Father, accept, accept these prayers for the, the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm going to move this a little bit. To reach. I decided it was important yeah. for us as we gather again in our church to have a moment of lament. I often say, don't I, that the, if you look at the book of Psalms, the, the songs of, of the Jewish people, the vast majority of them are songs of lament and yet often in our churches we don't tend to do that but it feels like a time for that today. We've all lost many things during the pandemic and many of us are still grieving, lost time with loved ones, missed birthdays, anniversaries, weddings and celebrations, lost work and income. Some of us have declined in health and mental health. So in a moment's quiet, as I light a candle, we lay our sadness before God knowing that he knows and praying for his presence with us. Many have also died during this time some of COVID-19 and even in our community, but also of other conditions as well. So we take a moment to remember all who have died during the pandemic. And we remember especially by name, Alice Metcalf. Sheila Dixon. Iris Pettit, yeah. Margaret Wilders, Edith Lillian Smith, Helen Hayes, 
Harold Doricott, Ruth Smith, Bill Richards, David Horton, Rachel Richardson, Irene Smith, John Lindley, Morris Ambler, Roy Moody, Pauline Brennan, Thomas Edward North, Pam Rundle, and John Wybrow. We remember today Robin Paddock, his year's mind falls today. Blessed are you, Lord our God, lover of souls. You uphold us in life and sustain us in death. To you be glory and praise forever. For as the darkness of this age is passing away, as Christ, the bright morning star, brings to his saints the light of to life, as you give light to those in darkness who walk in the shadow of death, so remember in your kingdom your faithful servants, that the death, death may be for them the gate of life, life, and to unending fellowship with you, where with your saints you live and reign in one in the perfect union of love, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We will leave those candles lit in memory of all those people. Um, at the very end of the service, if you would like to come forward and light a candle for a loved one or in lament for something that's been lost during this period, do feel free to do that. But wait until the very end of the service uh, to come and do that and do it safely, obviously, at a distance from other people. So please stand as you are able for the peace. We are all one in Christ Jesus. We belong to him through faith, heirs of the promise of the spirit of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. So let us offer one another a sign of peace in, in a safe way. <laughs> We're waiting with each other. Peace be with you all. Now go prepare the altar and we'll greet one another. Into your kingdom. Amen. Amen. 
Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us your peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
and praise, that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us hope. Dying and living, he declared your love. Give us grace and open the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others, and who in his spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be set free. And all earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. in your eternity. Trouble with us the life of faith. Heal the brokenness of our world. Draw us into your future. God's love and to reflect God's glory.
Can we come down here? Yeah. yeah. During this difficult time, when our church buildings are closed, we're still a church. Meeting virtually for prayer services and fellowship. Loving our neighbours by offering practical support to the vulnerable. And caring for our communities. The work of our church is reliant on people's generosity. A generosity that is a hallmark of a lived out faith and a testament to it. We give to our church in a variety of ways, but with the closure of all our buildings, we cannot receive all the gifts that we usually would. So we really need your help now. If you're able to give more at this time, here's how you can help.